Great. So you've just finished a page recording messages. Let's review some of the key takeaway messages that we should have gotten from here. No pun intended. So in this particular scenario, we have a very simple script. It just creates a single module. It has an output message. And you wish to record what this output message is. We'll actually show this in two different ways. Compared to the earlier basilisks, where you had to set things up in Python, it has a lot more scripts. You can understand, was it a single number you're recording or multiple numbers and how you're pulling it? This becomes much, much easier now. But you have to remember, the recording modules are really basilisk yeah. modules. So we create them, and we have to add them to tasks. But that's no big deal. At this point, you're a master of how to create processes and tasks in basilisk. So let's go through some of the code. The setup is very trivial. I make a single module, and I'm wrapping it. I'm adding it to the task, and, um, and that's about it. So and actually connects back to itself just to do something interesting. You will see this. If you look at the code, it's kind of a feedback loop. That's what I'm doing here. So we'll see numbers changing. Once you put one in, it adds one, it gets two, two gets added, and it does stuff. So that's all you need to know, stuff. It does stuff, technical term. What's new in the script? Message recording. So the first recorder set up here. The way you do it, you have some message. So this message is within a module. So I have module one dot output data out message, that message variable. And then you do dot recorder. And it doesn't matter if this is a C module or a C++ module, same thing, any message type. You add a recorder. And what this creates is it returns here. This is basically your basilisk module. Like we had mod one, the basilisk module. Message rec is a master basilisk module. You can give it any name you wish. And after we create this module, we have to add it to a task, which we do in this next line. And we're adding it to the dynamics task. So when we created the recorder, we just gave it brackets, which instantiates an instance of this um, class and uh, this object. That means by default, it's going to basically pull a copy of the message and stash it inside at the rate of this task. And this task up here was set up to run every second. So every second, it's going to go pull a copy. If you don't want to record that often, there's a really convenient thing you can do. Instead of just giving it these open close brackets, you can actually specify an optional argument in nanoseconds again. And so here, for example, I'm setting it up to record no sooner than every 20 seconds. It's the minimum time before it will grab the next message. So essentially, every 20th step, because we're running at once a second, it's going to grab a copy and store it away. The simulation only runs 60 seconds. So at 20 second steps, you can have the 0th one, 20, 40, and then 60. We should see four data points. Whereas the other one will have 60 data points, give a nice smooth line. So that's the setup. Single module, two different recorders running at different rates, but we're recording the same thing. Now, when you want to pull the data, when you have these recorders, you don't have to pull it anymore. It's actually already contained in this message object. That means you can pull out the actual states of the message. Like this message has only a single variable called data vector. And that's easily done here. And it also has the time information. Compared to Basilisk 1, the data and the time are done separately. So you don't end up with a lot of these buffered matrices. So this data vector, it's a three-dimensional vector. It will be a n number of me time measurements times three, whereas times is a scalar. It will be n times one. And uh, yep, so three-dimensional index will go from zero to one and two, three different steps. So this is a quick plotting routine. Now note, though, the times of this message rec is going to be different than the times of the second message rec in this example because we've chosen one to record at one second and the other one's going to record every 20 seconds. So that's why it's important that you keep you know, the right time with the right message type. If, they, if you have 10 messages all recorded at one hertz, you can pull the, that uh, time array out once and be done and use it for all the other ones. You don't have to have them all separate. So it kind of makes sense. But here we had two different examples. So that's kind of some of the key, key takeaways here, you know, that we went through the code. Pulling is super trivial because you don't have to pull anything anymore. You just have to access at this point. After the execution of the simulation, you access the data vector, you access the times, which gives you back the time thread. Now, speaking of times, there are actually two different times 
ones is the times that we talked about. This is the time that the message was logged. So let's say we're recording every 20 seconds as in this example. Cool. But if the message was written 10 seconds ago, it's still going to say at time 20, this message was recorded. But you don't know how old that message was. When it pulls the message, it actually has that information. When was this message written? So if you want to, you can actually also pull array, an n by one array of times written. So instead of having the time that it was the message was recorded, you will know this was actually written at 10 seconds, not 20 seconds. And that can sometimes can be handy. But 99% of the time, you just want the, the message at this time, record it, and plot it. And that's the one you will use most of the time. OK, so we're going to run this now. I'm going to show you the actual script and how this functions. So if we go to back to your Python, we want to run this particular script because you've downloaded it. And I'm going to do that. This is running 60 seconds. This module spits out, hey, I ran. You know, it's very proud of itself. It ran every, every time step. So you get this printout from 1 to 60. And I'm going to bring over the plot. So one of the lines, the solid lines, is a nice smooth, you've got 60 data points, that looks pretty good. The other one was recorded every 20 seconds. So it grabs it at the beginning, then at 20, then at 40, then at 60. And you can see the discrete differences between them. So this is where having that closed loop was nice because I needed something that actually would change with time. So anyway, this is what you should see. And uh, this is a nice demo of how to record messages. Greatly simplified and very easy to set up.